Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I have a great edition today. I have the second part of Jessica and I doing a Q&A, pulling the cards. We're loving this. We hope you liked it. We know you liked the first one. We hope you like this one. Check it out. SD, what is the closest you've been to death or a situation you don't think you'll make out of alive again? Wow, great question. And, uh, you know, when I was in the hole being beaten and, and abused, you know, the closest I think I was death, obviously, when they black out and, and you're being beaten and then you wake up and you're being dragged down the hole naked and then four-pointed. But even before that was worse, when you'd hear them open the end of the tier and you know they're coming for you. They don't say cuff up and you're in the hole and you know you're gonna get a beaten. Your adrenaline starts flowing and you're thinking of if I don't make it out of here or whatever. So I think that tense time, the actual fighting is just reaction and it's something that you get, I hate to say get used to. That never bothered me, whether it's fights on the yard or stabbings, I stabbed two people, I've been stabbed twice. Uh, so I just think, you know, the closest to death was definitely being, you know, beaten when they'd rushed in on me, concussion grenaded, and I didn't know if I was dying, that you just fall out, because it fucks your equilibrium up, but, uh, so, you know, it's always in the back of your mind, I never thought I'd get out alive after being in maximum security prisons that long, but I did, and, and that's it, and what about you, Jess? That's hard, I've been in a lot of fights, I don't think I ever thought I was gonna die, you know, like I've been pepper sprayed by the cops, thrown down by the cops, ripped out of my car by the cops. I They've hurt me physically, but I don't think I ever thought I was going to die. You know, I think the scariest moment for me where I just was really unsure of what was going to happen is when I went into labor with my daughter. Because you don't know if the cops are going to take you to the hospital or not. You don't know if you're going to sit there and just be left alone to give birth in a jail cell. Like you don't know what's what they're going to do. So I think that was probably the scariest thing I've experienced as a first time mother. Like I don't even know how to have a baby. <laughs> so I don't know how to have a baby in prison. That was probably the hardest thing. But as far as fights, I never thought I was gonna like get killed or anything. You, know, you reminded me and you're talking about fighting because I was a fighter, but I'm a big ugly guy. You're a pretty young woman. And you're the same age as my son. I think you're born in 89? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, same with him. He's born in 89. And uh, so I, I look at it, and I said, and I think back to my ex-wife, who's like you. She's a pretty girl, and she was a fighter, still is, crazy bitch. And we're great friends, you know, and, and she's, and I said, those women can get into it, man. I love it, though. I think they're great, you know, you girls. When you're small, people test you. They think that because I'm small, I can't fight. I am scrappy. I might lose, and I've lost plenty, but I'm going to throw down until you knock me out. <laughs> I love that attitude, and it's so crazy because they're right. They think this beautiful petite woman is, is not gonna fight me. And then she comes out with, I always say, we're different. I said, listen, I'm a nice guy now, but don't let my gorilla come out. But, uh, you know, same as you, I'm sure. Okay, you're up next. Said, I know prison food was obviously gross for the most part, but what food did they serve in the prison that you actually like slash miss? Not commissary food. Listen, Laura, <laughs> some people don't go to the chow hall. I would say like on holidays, like on Christmas, you get like this giant cinnamon bun at some places or pancakes that are really good or um, coffee cake. But on the regular, I was at this lower level facility for like four months until I got kicked out and sent back to the max. But they served grits with this cinnamon sugar butter. It was so fire. They served it every day almost, and it was really good. So I would say that. Wow, that, that was pretty good. Uh, food fucking sucks. People don't <laughs> even so have bad. a fucking clue how bad food is in prison. We used to have every Wednesday was hamburger day, Friday was chicken day. I uh, got to the point where that was fucking so gross. I can honestly say there's no fucking food. I mean, I was a commissary guy. I did have money. I was a little bit different. I lucky. So I used to buy tuna and I used to have mayonnaise for pro uh, mayonnaise, uh, peanut butter for protein because I was working out so well and, and and all that kind of stuff. I really could say there's no fucking there's nothing I miss. There ain't a fucking thing in prison I miss, especially the food. Uh, and when I do a video on the airplane food, pfft, you're gonna fucking see shit that make you fucking puke, make me want to puke right now. I'm gonna skip that no. video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's, 
ってたもん。Spellman, this is Are there ways for inmates to play instruments while in prison, such as access to keyboards or supervised access to acoustic guitars? Well, I'll start that one off. How that works is certain prisons we had, we actually did have a, a, an actual music room. I actually had a very good friend of mine named Bobby S. Damon, who since died. He was a concert pianist, taught me how to play. Uh, Old Ang Syne, and he also、uh, Sweet Home Alabama, C, D, F, and G of the chords on the piano, and he played for all the religious groups. Now, also, there were some prisons we had no music, no music rooms. They didn't give a fuck who you were and what, and what it was. Some did, some didn't. And in the beginning, when I first went in in 1996,、uh, they actually had where you can get a guitar and you can actually have it in your cell. That's not anymore as well. What about you, Jess? Some prisons do, some prisons don't. New York will allow you to have certain things as long as it's under like $50 or $100 in value.、Um, so a keyboard maybe. But the last prison that I was at in Arkansas, you're not getting shit. We didn't have a microwave. No one's gonna let a guitar or a keyboard or piano in. So,、um, but as I don't remember really in New York if I saw any, because I was a short timer and I was 18. 31 now. But I know for sure that Arkansas, they're like, you want a guitar? Don't go to prison. So you're not getting anything. There's no music. You got some janky little radio that costs like $75 and they play country music. And that's the same radio that you have to listen to the TV on. So. Wow. You know, that, you, you just I had to go a little bit. You remind me of something. First of all, you were in Arkansas. I was in Forest City, Arkansas. I was in the federal prison in Forest City, Arkansas. And, and it's so true. You really made me smile. They used to charge, I think, near $100 for a transistor radio. And I got out of prison. I remember the first one I got out in 2007. I, I, I looked at a radio and I think it was like nine bucks in a store. And I go, they fucking charged us, like you said, $70, $80, $90 for a fucking transistor radio. And if you were in a shitty area, I guess like Forest City, I was. You got no radio stations. Now, when I was in Atlanta, it was great because we had Atlanta radio stations, but other than that. Meg, if you could only meet one person from history, who would it be and why? Oh, wow. Oh, man,、great、we got、question. good ones like inventors, serial、question. killers. Serial killers, really? Just to ask them, like, what <laughs> the f- <laughs> is wrong with you, bro? I like abnormal psychology. I have a、um, bachelor's in correctional program support services, but with an under in psychology. So I, that's why I said serial killers. I'm not crazy, I swear. You might have to answer it first and come back to me. All right, I'll answer it first.、Uh, I'm thinking somebody, I'd like maybe, you know, I'd like to see some of the questions answered. So there's a c o u p politically, I'd love to. S- Talk to like one of the founding fathers, like George Washington or Hamilton. And, and you know, I watched the play Hamilton.、Uh, you know, their brains, the way they thought, and stuff like that. I think it's so cool. I always wanted to tap into the brain, like, of, I don't know if you know who this is, Ken Jennings. He's the, like the smart guy on Jeopardy, who won all the things. And the, how the fuck does your brain work that you can remember? I mean, I can do sports, but. Ask me who fucking wrote something in 1820 fucking something. Who the fuck knows? But I always wanted to know that, you know, as a, even a high intelligent guy and high IQ, it just amazes me. I'd probably I'd go Malcolm X. Oh, good one, yeah. Just to pick his brain a little bit. Yeah, that's, you know, I'd love, I love people who've done things against the grain, too. You know, I always did, too. I, I always, that, maybe that's why I do what I do, and I'm always going to do what I do. Well, fuck you in conformity or people that, that you don't want you. I'm not, again, not disrespecting, not saying what I do is right, anything of that nature. But when people start telling you you have to do it one way, and people ask me all the time with young people, why do you have such a good success rate? It's because I don't try to tell them what to do. I tell them to tell them my experiences to avoid the pitfalls I made. Not to stop doing. I want them to push the line. I want them to make, you know, risk, risky choices, but understand the consequences to those risks. But I don't want people to just be, be cookie cutters of our generation. My generation is, you know, I want your generation to just learn from our fuck ups 
and be better and take more risk and have more fun. Nothing good ever came from following the rules and walking a straight line and doing everything that you're supposed to do. Nothing good ever came from that, you know? So I'm the same way. I think it's like, it's a felon thing too. You know, we've seen like, we've seen how our government is. We've seen the worst of the worst, lived through a lot of bad shit and we've gone against the grain and been punished for that time and time again. So I think like, that's just kind of how our brain is anyway. But yeah, break some rules, take some risks. That's how you're gonna live. And we only get one shot at this. You know, we plot twist or spoiler alert, we're not gonna make it out alive. So push the limits. You, it, you said a great thing. I always tell people, you know, enjoy the fucking journey because the end sucks no matter what your faith is. Because if it's, if it's fucking 99 virgins or whatever the fuck you believe and that's cool, have fun. But just guess what, get this, you don't know. I can tell you this, life could be fun if you make it fun and you have control over that. Death is death. Like you said, spoiler, nobody's getting out alive. Hate to break it to you. <laughs>What's the dumbest thing you've seen someone do in prison or done yourself? Wow, you know, uh, the one dumb thing I always laugh about was the dude that came to our cell and said, that fucker stole my fuck book. And we're sitting in there and, and we said, go kill him. And we literally watched the guy walk down the stairs, we called him Brooklyn, goes and gets a shank and we're watching, now we're sitting on a tier, we watch him come up the stairs, he has a fucking shank with him about foot long, we call it a sword, and he walks into this guy's cell, and we're fucking sitting there, actually back then, we, this is Atlanta, 1998, and we're smoking a cigar, and he, we hear them fighting, and fucking, they both come flying out of the cell, blood everywhere, and two shanks fall off the tier right in front of a guard shack, and I say dumb or stupid, but it had us fucking laughing. The first thing we all did was run to the ice machine and get our shit because we know lockdown's coming. But it was kind of funny, you know, uh, as far as that. I mean, you see guys do stupid things, but um, that that kind of make me funny because that's pretty stupid to do it right in front of the guard. You? I mean, dumb things. <sighs> I was, I was kind of a klepto. I don't know if that counts as dumb, but I would steal anything I could off the guards. I would take shit right out of their pocket, like pens. And it was probably just really dumb, but I was a troublemaker. So I'd like bump into a guard real quick and take something out of their pocket just to prove that I could because women are catty and chatty and they're like, you can't do that watch me and I'm gonna take it. The whole time though, the last time I lifted something out of a guard's pocket, I'm like, I'm going to the hole. Like, not only are you running into her, but you're stealing something out of her front pocket. And it's just a pen, but I, I need that pen. <laughs> I need to prove Did that. Did you get caught? I never got caught stealing from the guards. I would steal tobacco, like chewing tobacco, cigarettes, pens, gum, highlighters. I stole a hairbrush from a county jail nurse one time, like just so I could have a brush. Do you think you were a klepto? In jail, I wouldn't steal shit on the outside world, but if I need to get something, whether that's batteries or like, even if I needed to get kites to the men in county jail, I'll do it right in front of the guard. Cause they just lock you down for like 24 hours. I don't care about that, so. <laughs> right, you, and, and people don't realize, you know, I always hear that, oh my God, I went to jail for a day. I said, listen, I did three years in the hole. I could sleep in my fucking bathroom for a month. <laughs> You know, when they when they do that show, uh, Naked, and, Naked and Afraid, you gotta go 21 days. I fucking, I've been naked in fucking jail, fucking doing not for, you know, months on end. I could fucking do that shit. Hold on, let's please get Larry on Naked and Afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if you wanna see my fucking no ass. They blur it out. Let's get you on the show. <laughs> Oh my god, that would be fun. You only if you come. Hell no, hell no. Ah can you see our tattoo bodies over there? I'm a New Yorker. I don't even like a wooded area. Like I'm You're like, New I'm from the city, Jess. I'm from the city. I'm not living in a swamp. But you know what? I, I know I could do it because I, I've endured and you have endured so much. I've been in holes where there was no, where they, the windows are broken out and it's freezing and you're in a corner huddled, you know, squeezing your nuts together and getting tight to keep yourself warm. And then I've been, you know, in fucking hot weather where you're just sitting there literally naked and just laying there, you know, just so hot. All right, we could do it. Let's go on the show. <laughs>
You and I, let's go naked and afraid, contact us. That would be a fun show. Fell in oh edition. Oh my fucking god. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a great one. Naked and afraid, felony edition. Good We one. can make shanks. Like, we can do it, I guess. <laughs> uh, listen, you know, you know this as well as I. Uh, inmates, and we used to make rope out of underwear. I can make so many things, you know, we're, we become the MacGyvers, you know, lighting fire with batteries and make boiling water with a, with a, uh, a cup, you know, like a, a milk cart and boiling water for coffee in the hole and, and making fire, making burners out of toilet paper and stuff like that. So, you know, people don't get it. You know, you get, you get very uh, creative. I really think for 21 days, see 21 days to me, Time is different for you and I. I think because we've done so much time that, you know, I look at time in such a different way. Uh, 21 fucking days. You told me I was in a hole for 21 days. It'd be like a fucking vacation. <laughs> they kept us in a hole for fucking months. That's the killer. And I know you'd understand the same. I think we could survive. And I think it'd be actually a pretty good show. Naked and Afraid, the felony it did. No one will give a fuck. Nobody will care. Who knows who's fucking who on those shows and that. So it's, I always wonder, don't you ever think about that? I mean, maybe they're trying to survive and eat food. <laughs> If you could travel anywhere, where would you go and why? I would go to Italy because I'm Italian, so I'm dying to see like where my grandfather came from. I'm a third generation Italian, so my grandfather is from Sicily, and I would love to go there. Wow, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I've never been to Europe uh, in my whole life. Uh, I've been to the, the Pacific, and I've been all up and down the Pacific Coast, and all the way to Alaska, Australia, down that way. Really didn't see it. I was in the military at the time. To be honest, I want to see America. And, and I'm starting to do it with my RV. And I mean see America. And then I want to go to Europe, obviously. But I want to see the Grand Canyon. And I've already seen the Hoover Dam. And I want to see the big country. We have Montana and Washington State and the oak trees. And the, you know, the oak trees that you could drive a car through. You know, they have roads through them. So I want to see the Pacific Coast Ca Highway in California all the way to San Diego. See Texas and see the Midwest and see where Tornado Alley. And, and, and then the Blue Ridge Mountains. And, and, and you know, I, I, there's so much in America I want to see. And that's what I'm going to do within the next few years. Then I want to go to Europe. Well, after Naked and Afraid, we'll go to Italy. All right. We'll get, maybe we'll do it there, both of us. Naked and Afraid, you hearing this? The Felon Edition, Larry and Jessica. Okay, GP, when you were growing up, or even now, what is the most, uh, one superhero or villain you always wanted to be from a movie? Oh, okay, I love, that's easy. I always wanted to be Superman. Uh, fucking, I mean, come on, can't die except for kryptonite. What the fuck? Who's got it better than you? And as a villain, you know, I grew up in the mob, style, mob life, so I know this is crazy. I always wanted to be an Al Capone. Uh, he r ruled with violence, and that was my way of going a little bit, which is not right. Again, I, I never said, uh, think that's good. So I think as a, a villain, it was an Al Capone. It was, wasn't the penguin on fucking Batman or some shit. Uh, or the, something like that, but superhero is definitely Superman. You? I root for the bad guys <clears throat> in the movies, um, but if I had to pick a superhero, it's Batman. Just always be Batman, you know? He's hella rich, good looking, and he can do all kinds of crazy shit with technology, so I'm going with Batman. But as a villain, like, I grew up on, on mob movies, you know? Like, Casino and Goodfellas, and I loved those, so. I don't know, any any villain from a mob movie, that's where I would go towards. Pete, the boss. Who is your secret celebrity crush and why? Oh, come on. I mean, I love Shania Twain. Something about her look. I've seen her in concert. I like the Dixie Chicks. I like rebels. You know, women who are rebels. I love that, independent women. I don't want a fucking yes woman or a, just a slave. Are right, you, Jess? Um, Tom Hardy, for two reasons. I think he's gorgeous. Also, I think he's a really nice person. <laughs> I think he's a nice guy. <laughs> we really did enjoy these videos. Uh, Jessica's great. I want to thank her again for joining us. We're going to do more of these people loving them. Thanks, Jess. 
everybody, please make good choices. Don't do the stupid things we did to get us in jail. And if you need help, get it. Have a great day, everybody. Make one good choice every day. You'll feel a lot better. Have a great day.